I'm Melanie Ray, and today I am doing the Literary Challenge. I was inspired to do this challenge by Corrigan Vaughan. Hi, Corrie! And basically the purpose of this challenge is to talk about 10 books that have influenced your life or inspired you in some way. Now, in a couple of cases, you'll notice that I talk about a trilogy or a set of books by the same author. I hope that's okay. So let's get right into it. My absolute number one favourite is Captivating by John and Stacey Aldridge. If you don't read any of the other books I talk about today, please read this one, especially if you're a woman. It completely altered the way I see myself and how I understand my relationship with God and my purpose in life. It also talks about the three things that a woman wants most. And although I'm very tempted to tell you what those are, I think I'll let you find out for yourself when you go and get the book. So please, please read this one. It's beautifully written. The author talks a lot about your heart as a woman, and she writes in a very sweet, conversational way. She calls the readers things like sweetheart, honey, dear reader. It's very affectionately written, and it makes you feel very warm and cozy inside. The next book is October Baby by Eric Wilson and Teresa Preston. I actually saw the movie first before reading the book in this case. I thought I knew what I was getting myself into. Nope. This book ripped my heart into tiny little pieces and then lovingly, gently put them back together as the book went on. I am pro-life. It's almost kind of a given when you're a Christian like me, but after reading this book, I am more effectively able to speak about my reasons why. So, I'll come back you guys. The next is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This was one that I read for year 13 English, and some of you guys might have read it for your English class as well. Jane Eyre is a young woman who in the face of injustice and unfairness and hardship chose to be the better person and the bigger person. She was the light in the midst of darkness and she found ways to change her world for the better. That's the kind of person I want to be. So Jania inspires me. The next is The Shunning by Beverly Lewis. Katie Lapp is shunned by her family and her friends and everyone she grew up with for standing up for what she believes in and choosing to follow her own path. This book challenged me so much. Would I be able to do that in the face of being rejected by everyone that I know and having to leave everything that I've grown up with? I would hope to say that I would be able to do that and this book definitely inspires me that if that ever was the case that I would be able to do the right thing. The next book is The Shack by W.M. Paul Young. While this book is not entirely doctrinally sound, to say the least, this book definitely helped me understand the heart of God in a deeper way and helped me in my own way to develop my relationship with him more. It's incredibly well written. I wasn't able to put it down. And it answers some of the really hard questions, like where is the God in the midst of tragedy and why do bad things happen to good people? And the answer shines through that even though these things happen, we live in a fallen world, we can still see the hand and the heart of God through everything and he's always with us. Next is The Hunger Games Trilogy by Suzanne Collins. The Hunger Games, Catching Fire and Mockingjay. These are recent favourites of mine. And to be honest, when I first heard about these books and the related movies, I didn't think that I would like them because the first thing that I knew about these books was how much killing and death and violence was in them. And that didn't sit very well with me. But when I took the time to read these books, I came to understand in such a deeper way how people can have empathy in the midst of oppression and how people can be the light in the midst of darkness. 
it moved me in ways that I can't effectively describe. It, they're incredibly well written. I couldn't put them down either. And I was drawing a lot of comparisons between what's happening in these books and the war-torn world that we live in today. And I would hope to see a lot more young people like Katniss being people who stand up and are the face of hope in these horrible times that we live in. Be a voice for the people, for the children, a voice of peace and compassion, not of revenge and violence. She's incredible. I love Katniss. I also love Peter, but it's a story for another time. So, carrying on. The entire published works of Jane Austen. She is one of my absolute favourites. We've got Emma, Pride and Prejudice, Mansfield Park, Sense and Sensibility, Northanger Abbey, and Persuasion. All of the lead female characters in these books are women that would have gone against the grain of the time period they were in. They're witty, sarcastic, strong, and yet at the same time charming, charitable, and sweet. The romances as well are very elegant and understated, and I love that. I'm a hopeless romantic. Sometimes I wish that I could be in a relationship with secret notes and poems and balls and beautiful dresses. What can I say? I'm a dreamer. Neat is The Complete Guide to the Babysitter's Club, and this book is just representative of the over 400 Babysitter Club books that I own. Yep, there's actually an entire toy chest filled to the brim with them in my room. I've got all of the original series, Little Sisters, Mysteries, Super Specials, Friends Forever, Kids in the Commons Class, you name it, I've got it. These books were my childhood and my teen years. The books write about very real issues, bullying, domestic abuse, racism, even death, in ways that are both honest and age appropriate. They're a really easy read and I still love them now even as a nearly 25 year old. Next is Little Women and this was my favourite book as a teenager. I still maintain that the literary character that I most relate to out of any book I've ever read is Jo Much. She is very real, she's honest and clumsy and funny and she does things without thinking and says things without thinking but at the same time she's very caring and compassionate and charitable and kind. I also find her a lot easier to uh, live up to than it would have been to live up to Meg, her sister, who was kind of the ideal woman as it would have been at that time. I love Jo and I'm actually going to dress up as her for a party in October. So I'll take photos of that when I do that. And finally, Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers. Now I love all of Francine Rivers books but this one resounds especially with me. For those of you who don't know, this is basically a modern retelling of the Bible book, Hosea. And this amazing girl, Sarah, is basically taken away from her family at a young age and put into prostitution, get given a different name, and then she gets rescued by a guy called Michael Hosea, who is called by God to marry her. He gives her all these different names to describe the different aspects of his relationship with her and her personality. And she actually leaves him and goes back to her old life because she feels like she doesn't deserve him or that she would disappoint him. And he goes back and chases after her. And this happens multiple times throughout the book. But the ending just captivates my heart. She returns to him after running away a final time and she strips down to nothing in front of him and runs across a field towards him and tells him her real name and there's this beautiful moment where 
there's just complete honesty and intimacy between them and it's a beautiful picture of Jesus love for us and that when we're completely open with him that we can have that intimacy and that love as well so I would really encourage you to read this book as well so that's my literary challenge over I tag any of you who want to do it it's a lot of fun to do and I hope you all have an amazing week I'll talk to you later Bye.